Football is in our national DNA. We invented it, we helped export it around the world, and it has been at the heart of British life for over a century. Football clubs, of course, just aren't just businesses. They define communities across the country. So along with almost every member of this House, I suspect, I was appalled by the announcement made late last night that a handful of clubs are proposing to form their own breakaway European League. A UK Member of Parliament there showing strong opposition to the proposed uh, European Super League. The league is now in tatters, with all six English Premier League clubs pulling out completely. Veteran sports journalist Kunle Shulaja is joining us this morning to take a look at this. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right, so quickly just give us um, a rundown of what exactly happened in the last couple of days. The whole idea of uh, the Super League and why it received the backlash that it, it did get. Well, the idea of the Super League uh, was actually booted by some top clubs in Europe who felt that they can make more money by playing among themselves alone and leaving out the smaller teams that the smaller teams are only feeding on their own uh, pedigree. You can imagine a small club from uh, Zetri Republic now facing Barcelona. It is the small club that is hoping to make money because of the crowd attendance that uh, such a profile, I mean, uh, a, a, so, so, such a feature yes. will fetch them. So now the big clubs want to really cut off the, the smaller ones and have a league to themselves alone. Well, uh, as, you, uh, as you may have also know, six top uh, English clubs were involved. We have uh, three others from the La Liga, that is Barcelona, the Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. And at the same time, we have three clubs too from the Serie A. So making 12, they are hoping to get three more clubs in, into their fold to make 15. And then they will now have an open competition for five other clubs to join. And they will be engaged in midweek matches. Personally, I feel that the whole intention was founded on self-interest and on greed. Okay. So, Mr. Shalaja, looking at the whole coronavirus pandemic and how FIFA even announced that, you know, uh, global soccer lost about $14.4 billion, you know, during the, uh, you know, the COVID-19 period in 2020. Was there an idea of a, of a Super League to make money such a, an entirely bad thing? Yeah, it's entirely bad because they actually plan to play among themselves alone, which means other clubs are already cut off from the pie that is supposed to be available for all. And if you also remember, in their, in their proposed co uh, competition, the uh, 12 funding clubs will never be relegated. So, and that alone has already compromised open competition and sporting merit. How do you involve in a competition where you know that your opponent does not have, I mean, we, not, we never lose. If, if it loses, it will not go down. So only those five uh, other clubs that join them, after that join the funding clubs, will be relegated or pushed out. So already, what is the essence of getting involved in such a competition? But the merit of their action is that it has also pushed UEFA into action to remodel the current uh, Champions League that is in existence. So that is the only merit I said where the action have taken. Otherwise, right. the old proposal was dead on arrival. Well, there's, there's been a lot of casualties since all this uh, drama started. Ed Woodward yesterday announced he was resigning. Jose Mourinho has been sacked. Um, uh, but I, there's you know, conversations about these clubs being punished. Uh, do you agree that there should be some type of punishment for these big uh, clubs, especially in the EPL, that well, chose to start the... the Super the punishment league. for them will be uh, will, may not be severe in the sense that uh, even the premiership, how did the premiership start? It's just the same way that this Super League is, is trying to start. I'm sure they took their 
uh, lead from what led to the existence of the current premiership. Because the premier, uh, you remember the, the, the former Division One, Division Two uh, league in Britain, the top clubs just in 1992 decided that they were not going to be part of it again, and the rest is history. That is the that led to the creation of the English Premier League, which has now been sanctioned. But if these clubs are not punished, there is likelihood of a bigger problem coming. You will see national associations coming up to form their own world governing body, just like you have a boxing, the professional boxing, fragmented, where you have the WBC, the WBA, the WBO, and so on. You now, dis you now discover that football will be fragmented in such a manner that every national, especially the top national association, the seven that have won the World Cup may feel that, oh, we don't need a Chad Republic in the World Cup. We don't need a Congo in the World Cup. A World Cup will, will yield more revenue if only top clubs are involved. And that is, and I'm sure that is the reason why FIFA is taking the proactive action by wielding the big axe to deal with the Super uh, League uh, uh, proponents. All right. So uh, we know that uh, FIFA's Infantino is now saying that this Super League, you know, clubs will pay the consequences. And even though some of them are already pulling out. So what, what sort of consequences, you know, should we be expecting for these clubs who join the Super League? Well, I expect that they will be fined. They will be fined. And the fine will now depend on the, on the length of period that they stayed uh, before they pull out. For instance, the six English clubs have pulled out well, they, their own punishment may be lesser than that of uh, the three clubs from uh, the La Liga and the other three from the Syria. Okay. Okay, and, and you know, this conversation has also let, you know, people talk about, you know, the love or the reason behind some of all these competitions, you know. Does this in any way show that it is really not about the fans, but, you know, about money and about business? Yeah, the whole thing is just about money. As a matter of fact, the Super League is better called the Super Grid because the whole thing is, is built, the foundation of it is the pot of money that is available to them. Don't forget that they have already gotten one big bank to, to give all of them loan to kickstart the league. Yes, That's JP, the Morgan. JP Morgan of US. So that is their plan. And they are also planned to ensure that there will be strong monopoly in such that they will be the only one controlling the football at the highest level. I think the earlier they are stopped, the better. All right, Mr. Shalaja, what are some of the lessons you think we can learn from this whole Super League you know, controversy? Uh, would you say one of them would be, you know, emphasis on the fact that we do need to pay attention to our grassroots football and develop that? Exactly. There must be there must be attention to grassroots football. And if you also recall, FIFA has already started that. That's why they said for every player that featured in the World Cup, the originating club for that player, where that cl uh, player actually began his career, will be compensated. So, the, for instance, now. Uh, and Igalu, for instance, who started his uh, football career from a local club in Oshun State, which is now Oshun United, has gotten some money from FIFA be, uh, because uh, Odion Igalu featured in the World Cup. So that is the thing. Otherwise, if that one is not allowed, you saw, just see the big clubs getting the big money, hmm. and a time will come when the source will be dry. And even the big, uh, the big club, we have nowhere to source for players. All right. Indeed. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning um, and for your time. Yes, okay. indeed. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Absolutely.
All right, and this is where we say goodbye this morning and wrap up the breakfast. It's been a very interesting morning. We want to wish you a very beautiful day ahead. Uh, uh, yes, what he said. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> and remember to join us on our social media platforms. It is simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel also at Plus TV Africa. I am Annetta Felix. Thank you for joining us today. And I am Osaogi Ogboa. The news comes up at 9 a.m. Stay with us.